you guys break up, obviously, and the big uh, thing that happens is you get a beer bottle smashed in your face, and you are temporarily blinded in uh, one eye. Uh, and, and at some point, I think you say you have 30% vision. Did you do the old school thing of going out in public with an eye patch on? Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, you. just, uh, I'm, I'm so old school, man. I felt like if we were going to, you know, try to make this thing believable, you know, I mean, cause, cause the thing is the fans knew where, where we were hanging out, um, after, after the events. So, you know, if you're sitting at a table, especially if I'm sitting with Storm, you know, sitting at a table with Storm, no eye patch, I mean, that's just calling bullshit to it right there. So, so yeah, Storm and I stayed away from each other. If I was going to be seen at all, I probably didn't even go out as much as I normally did uh, during the, that time with the the eye patch. But if I was going to be seen, um, it was going to be with an eye patch. So, you know, some people call it crazy, but hey, man, I, you just, you, you got to live it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right too. Absolutely right too. I can't agree more there. That also leads to the blindfold match. At, uh, is it lockdown? I'm sorry, I can't remember the TNA. Yeah, TNA lockdown. Yeah, that was lockdown. Yeah, sorry, uh, 2007. Before we talk about the blindfold match, it ends up going a bit wrong because the blindfolds fall off. Why would TNA do an entire pay per view of cage matches? I mean, doesn't that just sort of just ruin the idea of a cage match in the first place because it's not special anymore? Yeah, I completely agree with you on that. Um, I never liked that from the beginning. Um, again, this is an old school way of thinking, but you know, cage match was the ultimate end all be all. Um, you, you work towards that match and it's two guys that want to just tear each other apart. So to put an entire pay-per-view together, um, you're, you're basically throwing guys in a, a normal match, maybe for the first time. And it's a cage match. It just made no sense to me. Um, on paper, it's maybe intriguing, you know, thinking, oh, this this whole pay-per-view is a bunch of cage matches, and it's called lockdown, and, um, you know, we're in the Six Sides of Steel era, so, it you know, it, it can be exciting, but when you look at the psychology with the wrestling, uh, from a wrestling standpoint, it just didn't make any sense, so, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of it. No, that's fair enough, so let's say six cage matches happen before yours, uh, you, uh, you and James go in there. The blindfold match, the blindfolds keep falling off. Who designed those blindfolds? I wish I could tell you, man. Um, I remember when, uh, yeah, when they came to us with it, I, I was just thinking, well, how do you, how are we supposed to keep them on? And I mean, it just, there wasn't a whole lot of preparation involved in that. And um, I spe- that, per- that pay-per-view in particular, because um, even the cage we used wasn't the typical uh, steel cage that, that, used today or prior to that it was just it was some makeshift I, I can't even remember where where it came from but i remember i remember being there during the day and and all the guys all the guys were like you got to be kidding me so there was just so many things wrong with that pay-per-view uh all together i believe it was in st louis the crowd was i, I loved the crowd i mean they, they were there they were really um they wanted to see some action so um so, yeah, I mean, you just that's just one of those things you just have to work it. Um, like, a, 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 I mean, just you have to really put some thought into that. You know, you're going to have to save a lot of the cage spots for the, you know, the main events. Um, so, you know, the opening match isn't going to have a lot of uh, cage involvement in it. And um, you, that's just when you have to work, work your position in the card uh, to make it make sense. At least that's my viewpoint on it. At least yours wasn't electrified, in quotation marks. Yeah, you just add that to the list, so yeah. <laughs> Did you study any old blindfold matches to, you know, get some ideas of how to uh, put the match together? Yeah, I really studied uh, Jake and Martel. It's a fantastic match, that as well. If anybody says it isn't, you couldn't be more wrong. Yeah, I mean, and, and they pulled it off, so that was the match I was going to watch to uh, to try to, you know, make something work with us. Do you know, at the beginning, and I didn't see this until many years after I first saw the tape, was there's something massively wrong with the match. It's right at the beginning, they put the bag over Jake's head, and then he reaches under and scratches his nose, and he can see his hand through the bag. <laughs> I probably have seen that, but now I didn't remember that. Yeah, <laughs> no one seems to remember that as well. I, must, I may be the only person who ever noticed that, but if you look at it, then <laughs> that, yeah, look out for it.